Hello, everyone, and welcome to another week of the Realm Recap. I am Jason from yakface.com, again joined by FlyGuy from fly di- flyguy.net. Hello, ha. And we're going to give another quick rundown this week of what happened in collecting news. A um, few, few highlights here and there, nothing real major, um, but a, a decent week all around. Um, let's start off with... Um, uh, the rumor that Chewbacca is causing some issues. Mm. You read that, I assume? I did. I, I think one thing that's, uh, that's popped up uh, in my mind is the um, they crammed the thing into the package to begin with here. Right. Um, we got a kind of a bit of a leak here. It was uh, Arnie, our friend from um, Star Wars Action News. Mm-hmm. And I'll just share it on screen just now so everyone can see it on Arnie's Venganza Media uh, Gazette. Very newspaper-like production there from Arnie. And, uh, yeah, it's... The tree was always squashed, so... Yeah, um, it was a poor presentation from the get-go. And... Oh, we're going to get one of these uh, Google Hangout uh, feedbacks. Uh, it's me, I think. I'll just... Because I'm playing the video while I'm trying to... Um, oh, I see. My bad. Sorry about this, folks. Let me just minimize that for a second. You'll have to put it with my desktop for a sec. There we go. That's that stopped. Sorry about that. So... Um, like packaging issues aside for it, uh, the item itself is, um, I think a lot of it has to do in my mind with the uh, kind of clones and the Boba Fett kind of stuff, maybe to kind of take you out, maybe delay him uh, mm-hmm. as well. So it, it is a bit of a rumor there. Um, his source is saying there, um, originally approved, but now they reconsidered that Hasbro needs to find a better way to let the Wookiee in. So, uh, right. Which you know wouldn't be a bad thing if we if we let Chewie to uh, turn up in one of the later releases, then you know it's not in a stormtrooper because you yep. know he's fifty bucks, forty bucks, something like that. So yeah, and, and for those that aren't following along on the video portion of this, we're referring to the the six inch Chewbacca from the Black Series line. Um, yeah, it's it's not you know honestly, I'm not really surprised that they're kind of wanting to re you know, take another look at how that is coming out. I mean, it's like, what other figure looks that bad? <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. It, it looked ridiculous from the beginning, and it probably sent up a red flag somewhere, I, you know. So, if it's being delayed, that's fine. A lot of people are saying, just get it out there, who cares? You know, it's, people are going to open it anyway. You know, it doesn't really, you know, matter what mm. what it looks like in the box, but... I, I bet Lucasfilm and whatever you know Disney at this point or Hasbro, you know they they probably think something different. They want to put their best you know their best presentation, best foot forward regarding the line. It's supposed to be a collector's line, and it's supposed to look nice and not you know hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah. well, I, I mean, I guess the fact we know the the new we've seen the packaging for the the new version um, mm-hmm. of the new look and feel. So why not just wait? Makes sense. Right. Yeah, we pack a clone. We pack a boba. Still, people hunt for boba everywhere. <laughs> it's just you cannot get enough of that guy. It's uh, so yeah, not a bad thing to delay, I think. Yeah, and you know, it's it's rumored that it's going to hold up all of the figures, you know, in that wave. I I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that it's just you know, like you said, they just reshuffle the assortment and have Chewbacca come out later and you know carry forward a Stormtrooper or Chewbacca or some other wanted we, figure. Clone Trooper. We know from our friends at uh, DorkSayToys.com they've um, they had mentioned to us, I think it was last time they'd mentioned they'd, uh, Hasbro's re-soliciting the first wave of the Black Series so it's popular enough that people are really beginning to I think it's penetrated that deeper level than like you know did I see the fanatics like you and I collect everything, right. you know? It's really beginning to permeate into kind of adult collectors and younger kids. Really, people are beginning to see this line as the, a really good quality line, I think. so. Um, yeah, and, and they, you know, I think Hasbro really did a really decent job of um, of their distribution of the Black Series 6-inch figures as far as... Yep, I agree you know, with that. Th- there wasn't a lot. I mean, granted, uh, every one of us see a ton of Lukes or R2s out there um, but I think that as these later waves have come along, they, you know, the people that were kind of hesitant to get into the line maybe sure. saw these second or third wave figures and that, oh, I, I really like these, and now they want to pick up the wave one 
And, Absolutely. You know, and I think it's good if if Hasbro is going to resolicit that first wave, then as long as they handle it right, as far as not you know going totally Phantom Menace crazy on you know, like they did with the, the <laughs> no, we don't want that one. The vintage collection. Um, we definitely do not want that. Yeah, so I think I think it's all good. I mean, if it helps get get more more figures out there and okay. to more people okay. that want them, then that's great. I mean, I'd buy another, you know, Darth Maul probably if I if I saw one just to display it in its alternate outfit. Yeah. I'm a fanatic. I bought, I bought multiples already, but uh, yeah. I still look yeah. at them and shield and I hold them and I think, do I want another one? No. Do, do I need a yeah. third? It's like, no. So, uh, yeah, it gets a little nuts. But uh, a week ago, you and I uh, did a, another podcast, uh, right. Boring Conversation anyway, along with our good friends. Um, this thing went nuts. It really says... It was so very... Weird. It was very enlightening, I think. It was. It was very therapeutic, I think, for all of us as well. It was uh, I approached the subject of are we collecting or hoarding? And um, Dan Curto, a friend uh, from uh, the Collector's Cast, Tamer from the Imperial Shipyards, Paul from Jedi Temple Art Archives, and Eddie from DorksleyToys.com, as well as you and I, we just sat around, and for literally an hour and a half we went through and we showed some examples of um, people's collections and what's not to collect, you, sh you shared some inner secrets of yours. We shared some right. inner secrets of ours. We told what we collect and why we collect. But um, it's been very therapeutic for a lot of people. You were saying it's um yeah. Um, I had received a, you know several comments and emails and you know posts on Facebook and whatnot regarding the whole the whole discussion, and mm. it was it was enlightening on my part. You know, uh, just for the fact that. For, for those that didn't watch it, I I strongly recommend you watch it. Um, if you're kind of on the fence as far as where you think you are as a collector, you know, do you hoard? Do you are you a collector or somewhere in between? You know, I always kind of considered myself a collector, but then <laughs> you know, listening to some of these stories and <laughs> kind of revealing some of my own tales, I in in the show I revealed that. You know, when I open, let's say, a boxed set, you know, whether it be a vehicle or a multi-pack, I would keep the twist ties and the rubber bands that were that held the figures <laughs> and vehicles in the packaging. And people just, you know, they could sympathize and also recognize that that is a ridiculous thing to do. And well, I, I was just going to say, I had a couple of people mentioned to me. They said they even obsessed about the twisty ties and which order they were affixed to the product. Absolutely. Or the item. Yep. So they they topped you. So don't worry, you weren't so bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I didn't feel alone, you know, at that point. Um. So, but over the past couple of days, I've been photographing some stuff for a couple upcoming toy guide updates, and I'm undoing twist ties. And I'm undoing rubber bands, and I'm thinking back to last week. And I'm like, I'm not keeping this, and I've got a just a pile of you know in the garbage over here, and it feels really good to no, look over no. at that, saying, yeah, I'm I'm we, parting ways with you, you know. <laughs> we shared some great uh, photos as well of other people's um, uh, collections, and you raised a brilliant one, well worth watching, even just for the beginning first fifteen minutes. I think you shared it was Jedi G Man's uh, collection. Just right. be beautiful examples of collections. Gus Lopez, a bit of Steve Sansweet and a few others and it was great fun. I loved it. Really good fun. So we'll do it again and come yeah, back with some it was, but, uh, it was a great show. Good toy talk. Just a quick intervention if we can just we're on the live show here and uh, Kenneth Crayley Jr. as usual, just the guy who's on every website, every Star Wars, he's just the most devoted Star Wars fan. So hello, Kenny, if you're watching. Uh, he's just saying, great show as always. Got the Black Series 6-inch Obi-Wan, and I won a custom figure Jedi Judo from Darth Daddy's Customs and some Clone Wars <laughs> figures from the Wolfpack podcast. So well done, man. I've never nice. seen a Jedi Judo custom, so uh, share some photographs if you can, Kenny. Pop them up somewhere, and we'll, we'll get a look at them. That'd be good. Absolutely. So next was you. Um... Darth yeah, Revan. we talked last week about the, I think it was last week, um, the Lego Darth Revan uh, polybag mm. figure, and that has been officially confirmed as the May the 4th promo giveaway. You know, I say giveaway, you have to spend 75 bucks to get it, but um, 
That is that that is the whole plan regarding that figure. So that's going to be available at you know um, Lego dot com or uh, like a Lego store, you know, a, a yep. specialized Lego store. You know, you, you're not going to find it at Toys R Us or anything like that. It's it's strictly a Lego promo. So yeah, it's nice to see it confirmed. And it's it kind of indeed. sad that you have to spend spend seventy five to get it. I don't know if I'm gonna go that route. I might try to track it down other by other means, whether it be online or see if I've got a friend that's willing to spend seventy five and doesn't really care about a expanded universe <laughs> Lego person. But we'll see. I think I think I, I think you know someone that can get you one of these. I'll manage to, to get them, mm-hmm. but. Uh... Regardless, it's going to be um, sadly, it's going to be about one hundred and twenty-five dollars here. You got to spend, so I'm sure it's hell oh, right. not to be buying Lego. And I think the UK is seventy-five pounds, uh, mm-hmm. their version of it. So uh, it's a little bit uh, any cool, but um, it all comes out in the wash, I guess, for Lego. But um, yeah, he's going to be popular without a doubt. What else do we have? Oh, there's another couple of Lego things. Uh, just late last night, um, a site here in uh, New Zealand, I think it is, um, and another couple of sites actually as well, another one as well called Neo Ape and Lego Gossip, and a few others quickly shared some photographs. I don't know if you've seen these yet, but we've got some high-res images of the Lego sets for the remaining half of the year, so we're yep. getting to see bigger high-res pictures. So there are about a 1,000 uh, pixels and size. So a decent good look at the cantina, the Lego cantina, which just is so much want. I just mm-hmm. have to have this thing. That little jute bag looks fantastic. Um, yeah, I saw that. Um, I think Lego, or not Lego, but uh, Amazon Canada had posted. Ah, did these... they posted. Maybe that's where they've all stolen them from. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're out there. So, I was kind of uh, confused by that um, cantina set. It looks like it shows two Luke's in that set. Or is or, or they? Just you know, showing the same figure. Otherwise. Lego never do that. They never do that in any of the pictures. But then again, that is two hands. Right. It's so, it was weird. I yeah. I don't know if they kind of combined a couple maybe separate group shots into one. Mm, I think they solicited. Yeah. I did see a smaller box, uh, the front box. I didn't post it because it wasn't high res. It was only 500 pixels, mm. uh, and it didn't have like you know times two on it. So I, I guess it. May well be, but we'll find out soon enough. But yeah, it uh, it does look nice. I mean, I, it does. It just begs a second part, though, doesn't it? It just has to have a second part to go with it. Yeah, this. and it's interesting that do back. You could take the saddle off, and you could replace the space where the saddle set, you know, would would be sitting with those green pieces that are laying there next to it to you know to finish out the oh, his pack. All right, good point. It's, I saw it's that. Kinda, it's kind of neat. Hmm. I, I mean, Pretty cool little guy. But lots of cool minifigures, a nice update in Greedo. He's one of the more, well, not the more expensive, but he, he's always been a kind of relatively hard-to-find figure. Um, and uh, the modal nodes. But uh, just the cantina, man. It's classic. We've got to, we've got to get uh, get this. I think you got, you got to buy it. Yep, looks and, nice. Uh, B-Wing with some nice little uh, uh, ten num. I think that is, if, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody knows. Um, and a nice right. cool B-Wing pilot. And I guess that's the um, what's his name? The expand. He was the Millennium Falcon Kraken. Kind Kraken, Kraken right? maybe. Kind of looks like Kraken. Him. Unleash the Kraken, exactly. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, there's a few more. There's only a couple here. More snow speeders. Slightly updated um, uh, snow troopers. A little bit more uh, detail on the chest, plus the little right. scuts on them this time. Yeah, I like um, their little their little helmets. Yeah, a little different, more evil kind of eyes, and a slightly different backpack as well, it seems. Um, so again, we'll get to see more of that soon, but uh, we've had so lots and lots of these. Looking at that snow speeder, you know, to be honest, mm-hmm. I'm not fully versed in how many different s- snow speeders have come out. You know, oh, most of them are the <laughs> gray and orange, the gray and orange deco mm-hmm. one. Um, this is all gray, so that's specifically Luke's snow speeder then. There you go. You know better than me. I, I, all I know is we've had like five or six in the last four, right. maybe four years. So there's been a few. There's been quite a few. Um, came with a Hoth Wampus set. Right. Came with an Atat set. Came it's with like a, a hanger. Hanger. There's exactly. So um, there's been yeah, quite it's, a, it's a nice fun set. And it's got these new pop little uh, 
pistols, I think, or pop little. It's got them there, but it's not showing anybody with any guns that has the pop effects. I think it's on the back of the the speeder, the little you know the these little new ones. Yeah, that's right, that new gun and the gun on the front of the. Uh, um, well, that doesn't look to work there properly either. That red kind of firing missile. That doesn't look as if that's no, firing. No, something different. What, yeah. what, is, what do you think those little uh, clear blue studs are? They're just in a pile. To, to go with the uh, uh, flick kind of piece there at the back of the snow speeder? Just oh, kind of oh, hovering really? around. Yeah, it's got, that, that's that little mounted gun there. It's got that little flick uh, kind of right. part on it that you flick, so they'll, they'll bound to be for that because every other minifigure has the standard um, blasters. Okay. So I'm guessing they're in the spares for the, um, the little container there at the back. Cool. And what else we got? There's a bit more box shots of the... I don't think we'd seen this one as big uh, in a high-res... The Phantom. Piece, the Phantom. From the Rebels. Yeah. Rebels. Indeed. And we get a little bit of uh, another shot. We'll come back to Rebels. There's a better shot of that. There's some more. Nice little shots. That little tiny Emperor James was on about that in the Collector's Cast with Dan. I remember that. The uh, Yeah, I, I the, didn't remember that that came with it, so... Mm. That's the first time it's a tiny mini uh, Palpatine. Nice little Imperial Trooper there, though. Mm-hmm. Different designs and sideburns of the 70s. Love that. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. And the little droopy, slightly different change Stormtroopers with printed legs. That's a, just an absolute must for me. But yep. uh, Kind of cool size ship. There's, the, there's more Rebels there. And a bit of a closer look up at some of these figures. So, again, that really droopy Stormtrooper. Very different yeah. mouth on it. Really cool. Nice kind of colours on that ship as well. It's a nice little set. And I think that was... Oh, there's the other ship. So there's your favourite chopper. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool little cool little guy there. Very dumpy. They've even kept the size yeah. and scale ratio very well. And um, Yeah, I like it. Very, very nice. So, yep, some high res for you to drill over. Oh, there's one more that I uh, forgot about. This is another Jack 14 set. And it's one of the places you can get of... Uh, uh, El- what do you call it? El- Ethorian? Or- yep. Ethorian, thank you. Uh, Hammerhead, basically, for those that right. are like me a bit thick. Um, but uh, great for your cantina. So you have to buy this set to top up your cantina. And uh, I got a Death Star droid there, which I thought was really, yeah. really cool. Are those little blue and green um, Hol- little stud Hol- stags? Mm-hmm. Are those holocrons? Yeah, holocrons. Is that what yeah. they to be? I guess. Yeah, I like, I like that because I received the promo, um, the Yoda's... You did. Rub Yoda it in. Carnivals. Rub it in. <laughs> yeah, and, and it included all of those little holocrons that were supposed to, that's what they were supposed to represent on the wall, but they were just the single, you know, square one by one yeah. studs that were spread out all over. I like the treatment of this a lot better, you know, with the stacked clear, you know, on yep, either side of a colored tile. I agree. Or, and I think, you know, there's, there's the other one, the last one, which was oh, the yeah. uh, newer version of the. Uh, and at at and as someone in our Facebook page just pointed out this morning, why are we getting stung with only one at at driver? You can't drive with only one. And I thought, well, <laughs> yeah, kind of true. So, uh, but again, mm. those new snow trippers with their very evil little eyes—they've got very they beady so little eyes this time. Um, and it's a more cloth-like kind of experience on the front of their faces. Yeah, it's gone. It's, I thought the same. I, yeah, I don't know how pliable that you know face guard is if it's or if it's a you know more of a rigid plastic. Just, you can see the different backpack there for really anal people. Yeah. Uh, the uh, instead of the old kind of fashioned tubes they had in their back, almost like uh, gas tanks. It's now more a uh, kind of sand trippery light color, but all in white. So yeah, mm-hmm. for the anal among us, and a, another atta as if you needed another one. So it looks quite small. Way yeah. Small scaled down. Yeah. But uh, it'll be cheaper hopefully, and of course back to Revan. So that's us. Right. Um, on with the show. Enough oh. of the Lego. On with the show. Sideshow. Um, um, they had uh, revealed a few things this week. Uh, the most expensive of which <laughs> is going to be that uh, life-size carbonite Han Solo. Um, that's been teased for a couple years now, I think. I think it was first revealed at like uh, San Diego Comic-Con a couple years ago. And mm-hmm. it's finally get around to uh, being solicited um, from Sideshow. And they've got a nice preview up on their site. I'd imagine it's going to go up for pre-order next week. That's kind of usually their their deal. They show it one week, and then then the next up yep. on Thursday is when it goes live for for order. So, so look at this. You get a free hot lady. <laughs> yeah. 
She comes with a carbonate. Fantastic. She comes to help explain to your significant other why you have this thing in your basement. <laughs> she comes to replace your significant other because you don't have a significant other once you buy this thing. So, uh, yeah, I think you'll be if, single if you buy this thing, that's for sure. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was just going to say, <laughs> if I was single, I'd probably get it. I'd be totally me as well. <laughs> totally just, me as well. <laughs> there's just no way I could. I mean, uh, what are you guessing for price? Couple grand? Couple of grand? I mean, I mean some. Oh, this thing's got to be in the four grand region for my mind. I don't know. I mean, there's no articulation. It's, it's not like a <laughs> Iron Man life-size deal. It's like a big hunk of whatever, plastic, probably hollow. I, I just don't, you know, it's got some, hopefully it's got some lights along the side, you know, along the panels, not just the illuminated base. Yep. <sighs> Look, yeah. if it's a couple of grand, I'm sorry, but that puts it within our reach. <laughs> we, could, we could maybe, maybe you know, once we flex pay after five years and sell our children or whatever, uh, mm. you know, that's, I just, I get the feeling it's one of these four and a half, five grand things. It's just, uh, be. I don't know, I'm guessing, I'm wildly guessing, but. Because uh, what company came out with this before? Did they, was it Master Replicas? Did I they have it was Master Replicas. I, I can't remember. I remember Arnie talking about it on a Star Wars action news years ago, like yeah. four years ago or something. And I don't, I just totally, I'm blanking on what that one even cost. So can't even remember. Can't even remember. If you know, let us know. If you leave a leave a comment in the video. Um, but uh, it, yeah, it looks nice. I mean, <laughs> I can't say I don't want it, but I, I'm not. No. <laughs> it's whether we can afford it or not. That's yep. the problem. But I uh, see it's a very very nice piece. That's for sure. Yeah, um, uh, Saich also put up a teaser for the uh, Savage Press premium format figure. That's probably going to go on. I think it did say it was going to go on pre-order next week, um, next Thursday. Yeah. I've, I've kind of fielded a few comments about, you know, it looks like his nose is too long <laughs> just by, I, and I think it's due to the fact of the, of the lighting. I think it there's a heavy shadow that's being cast on his lip and it looks like his nose, you know, like she's, it, it looks like it's the Wicked Witch of the yeah. West or something, you know, like it just looks odd in that in that uh, preview it photo, does. I don't think it's quite that exaggeratedly long. It's probably a nice piece. I I don't do premium format figures myself. Oh, I thought you did. No. Um, I do. I've done the. I've done all the Mythos ones that have come out, <clears throat> but uh, I only have one premium format, and that is the Luke Skywalker with the Yoda. Okay. That's the only one I have. But this is this is a nice one. If you're a Clone Wars fan. And a Savage a Press fan, I think this would be right up your alley. Um, I find this really quite disgusting, and I don't see that. <laughs> and I, I just these horns look horrible. They look they really do look yucky. <laughs> just... Yeah, I mean that's kind of how he oh. was when he kind of showed up later. You know, later on in the series, you know, they were yeah. kind of a, a stubbier horn before. You know, when we were first introduced to him, and then when he and Darth Maul were out doing their deal. Mm. It's like a kind of ice cream machine, but going the wrong way, squishing yes, it. Like, it's just, oh, yuck. Horrible. But uh, you're right with that nose. That's going to cost Saichu you a little bit. A lot of yeah, people are going to turn off by It does look a little, little off there, but... Mm. Yep, so... Interesting. Yep, pre-order next week if you're interested. Otherwise, you can save, save probably someone. a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> um... <laughs> Let's see, I received the shipping notice from Sideshow for the 212th Clone Trooper. That's the white and orange one. Um, and that kind of rounds out the deluxe Clone Trooper line that they have been That's right. selling, or, you know, promising for a few <laughs> a few months now. Um, like, I think it was, it was a month and a half ago, I think, that they had released the first three. This one That's completes right. the set of four. There was the shiny, the veteran, the 501st, and now this final uh, 212 clone. And that orders, at least I was I was notified that orders start shipping April 17th here in the U.S. For those that had pre-ordered that that one, so then I think it's going to be kind of quiet for sideshow for a little while. I don't know of any. There's 
only a couple that are probably due in the next few m- months. I think there's a two pack of clones, and then there's a some security battle droids, and then we get back mm-hmm. into the the Hoth figures like Han and Luke and the probe droid and Tauntaun and all that stuff. So, yep, gonna be quiet for a little bit, which is okay. That that's perfectly okay. It means I can pick up some <laughs> Iron Man figures, which are just so many yep. coming at once. But uh, yeah, I'm all up for that. Um, you were you were back again on the Space Trees. I love the name for that. Uh, I know I said that before, but um, yeah, Space Trees. Uh, we we received an hmm. update from uh, from those guys. Um, I'm getting the link to pop up here. Just one moment. Um, yeah, you can put it on screen there if you want to see it. But, oh uh, yeah, there it is. Um, Twelve Parsec, who. Uh, are producing these, uh, they 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 have reached their goal. Obviously, we talked about it, I think a week or so ago. Um, they're looking for uh, what was it? A bonus goal it says here. It's a bonus goal where you could get a special a torch special reel. accessory for those that. What's a, what's a torch railing? I don't quite get that. Special torch railing. Um, oh. I don't know. I'd have to re- read it again. You did. Uh, just an additional additional accessory. I mean, it's it's a great piece. You know, if you're if you're looking to to build a oh there you go torch railing <laughs> right. It's on your forums. There you go. Someone's put it. Yeah, that's cool. I thought it was in there. Very cool. A little extra. Yeah. Nice. Love all these customizer guys. They're doing such a good job. Absolutely brilliant job. There's not enough yep. of them. So uh, well done, guys. Well done. Um, we also had a concept of the week launched this week, and um, local Godel, our go-to guy for this uh, for this segment, he uh, produced a really great great one that Hasbro said they probably will never touch. Um, it's Jackson from the classic Marvel <laughs> comic. Um, it's if anyone who doesn't know who Jackson is, it's basically a giant uh, green rabbit. Um, okay, this is going to give me nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's done two versions. He's done kind of a more animated really? style version, kind of ah, based off of the Jack cartoon, Man. and then he did a a revised one just a couple days ago, which looks really quite good. I either one I would totally go for. Don't. Oh, I see. I just think sometimes things from the EU should be buried and killed, <laughs> and never seen. And Jackson happens to be one of them for me, but uh, great in comics, but. Yeah, Jackson, the rabbit. Yeah, no, oh my God, no. Oh yeah, my that, God, uh, no. <laughs> great work, though. Great custom. Yep. I, I, I don't follow the custom. That's a absolutely spot on. Uh, as much as you could get, I think, to the comic book version, uh, the early mm-hmm. Marvel stories. But so brilliant work in the custom. But uh, you yeah, know, one of my favorites. Scary as. <laughs> Again, join the Yak Face forums and you get to see all this stuff even before yep. this show. So, uh, good thing to do. Let's see. Cool. Another cust- couple customs this week. Um, you had posted the other day um, one regarding a custom Johto cast, six-inch figure based off of the the Boba Fett figure. That's right. That's right. Just going to bring this up on screen. But um, as we know, Jason obviously bought the prototype Boba Fett uh, before. And a beautiful piece that was, and there was some confusion because there's lots of people doing some good work out there. And, and yeah, I'm seeing so show. many. I know, I know. I'm getting so many, you know, emails and stuff showing customs regarding, you know, anything on that Boba Fett, whether yep. it's Boba Fett or Jodo Cast or oh, different fits. versions of Boba Fett. <laughs> I think anything fit works, but um, yeah. this was uh, from uh, there's a great group, and I, I gave them a little shout. Out, I think on one of the shows, but another shout out to them anyway. The Six Inch Black Series Collectors Group, Mark Watson and the gang, uh, they set this up, and a really good bunch of guys on Facebook. So go ahead and join them if you're really into Six Inch Black Series, as I am, and uh, I'm on there too. So we'll say hello. But um, following on from the white prototypes we talked about on the uh, realm recap here. Uh, this is uh, John Malamus, uh, a.k.a. Jin Sautom, or whatever you pronounce that. But he's done some great work here for this uh, judo cast. I love the head sculpt on this. I thought it yeah, was I really wonder what. I wonder where that came from. I mean, I don't know. If, if he... I have no idea. He doesn't mention it in these uh, pages, as far as I can see. But, um... I can't place it on oh, my... There you go. He mentions it. Finally, a Marvel Legends Ronin head was used. Ronin? Don't huh. even know what that was. Marvel Legends Ronin? 
Um, damn good looking um, version of it. It's very like Judo Cast if you've read the comic. Uh, great comic, uh, um, Twin Engines of Destruction, unless mm-hmm. I'm wrong. Amazing comic way back in the day, way back in the dark times, I think, for you and I. When yeah, there was nothing late, coming out. Late 90s, maybe early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, and it was a really, really good story. And uh, this Judo Cast here, so obviously using the black 6 inch, just as the, the one that Jason had and showed, and there's a Sand Trooper blaster going on there, but it's the helmet and the detail. I mean, wow. Hasbro, release this thing. Just just make lots of our Mandalorians. You'll sell them at the rate the Boba's selling anyway. Um, yeah. And the price of the it, customs. God, yeah, yeah, it's not just a repaint either. He's added some additional little, yes, little accessories uh, around the belt and yep. on the holster itself. And if you were to pull up the, the illustration from the comic, it's very, very close to, it is. to that representation. So it's, it's a really nice job. And I like the the color. Definitely. Well, we know Hasbro did a really good, a pretty decent job, actually, of Judo Cast a couple of times. One was a bit dire, but then they they quickly corrected it again. It was actually, and I'm looking at it right now, in Clone Wars packaging of all kind of... From Kmart. Clone Wars era. Yeah, that's right, Kmart exclusive. Beautiful package, and um, God, they swung on pegs for long enough for me. Mm-hmm. But um, he's a great figure, and very—I mean that that judo cast kind of symbol that's on his chest there is very unique to him, yep. as well as some of the other emblems and details. So yeah, he's done a great job. So uh, uh, not cheap, but uh, beautiful. So uh, yep. so don't tell us, Jason, have you bought it? No, I didn't. <laughs> <You're the boss. laughs> no. Uh, I only knew about this one, so I think it, it's been out for a month or so. Um, the guys in the, the, the Black Series group just shared it the other day, though, so I just didn't get to see it. But, um, yeah, love these customs. Again, great jobs by all you custom peeps out there. You do an amazing piece of work. So, What else did we have? Let's see, that kind of brings us to our friends over at uh, Imperial Shipyards. They've posted a nice selection of new updates of customs this week, varying from, you know, basic figures to display, or, you know, dioramas and playset type of things, and, you know, the Clone Wars and Blasters, it's just great. If you go to their front page and just scroll down, um, you'll just see there's, like, the first one that's shown here is a nice uh, uh, rum slag, I believe is this, yeah, rum slag from uh, episode one. It's, it, it, at first glance, it looks like it's just the Hasbro, Hasbro yeah, it does, figure doesn't painted, it? but it's, it's got incorporated G.I. Joe parts to it, to make wow. it a little more articulated, mm. and it looks really nice. Probably um, one of the best things at the Phantom Menace in my mind, I saw that character, and he's yep. just a two-second guy in the background. Um, yep, and then another customizer, um, Nemesis, has done a custom DL-18 Skiffgar blaster. If you don't know which oh, blaster it is, it's the one that Han uses when he's trying to free Lando from the Sarlacc tentacle. Um, and it's the same, same, yeah. same, yeah, same blaster. You know, I believe you, Luke uses the same one in Jabba's palace when he's gonna That's right. That's try to right. escape. That's beautiful. Um, That's beautiful. Yeah, and it's a great display to, you know, it's kind of like a shadow box type of presentation for it. So, mm. you got you nice. customizers. I'm telling you, you're just you're rocking my world here these days. It's amazing yep. looking stuff. Look at this as well. The streets of Mos Eisley. Yeah. Wow. Kind of the. You know, throw a little bit of, a little bit of paint on there. Yep, you're done. You're done. Um, more. Commander Phil. And there's a great six-inch Yoda custom down there. I'm a huge Yoda fan. Um, and there's wow. Glorbs is the customizer, and it says it's 100% scratch made. Wow, that's it's, hard to do. <laughs> he, he looks. I don't know. He doesn't look quite as cute as he did in the. Uh, no, he does not. Empire Strikes Back. He looks no. a little more, a little more grumpy. But uh, it's a great, great custom again. So, you know, I won't run through all of the customs that they're showing off this week, but there's quite a bit, and all of them are pretty good. So head over to our friends at uh, Imperial Shipyards and uh, check out their latest round of customs they're highlighting this week. Definitely. Now, this is something you bought and we talked about last week. Um, yes. You lucky man, you. Yes. Uh, I I, uh, what did you think? What did you think? Um, 
I did a kind of a quick down and dirty review of that, typical of most of my reviews. I don't get into anything really all that lengthy. Um, it's for me personally, I really enjoy the figure. Um, this is for people that aren't familiar. It's the six inch Indiana Jones. I, you know, it's not Star Wars, but it's Lucasfilm, so I <laughs> I'm including it here on the on the show. Um, <laughs> It's it's a collectible produced by Max Factory is the company. They do this line of super articulated six inch figures. Uh, you know, I think this is the only real figure they've done that's from like a movie or you know most of their stuff is more kind of anime based. I think. Yep. Um, so, but they announced this last. I think it was in October that they were going to produce an Indiana Jones figure. And uh, <clears throat> so I decided I'd pick that up. I I received it on Monday and did a nice... Uh, you did a very thorough toy. Right up and photo yeah. shoot of it. Um, it's it's a nice figure. It's very comparable in scale. I mean, being six inches, it should be, um, with the, the Hasbro Black. Black Series line. It is a little bit shorter, but it's it's a well well-produced piece. Um, the likeness is better, I think, than the Hasbro than the mm. Hasbro figure. It looks far more like Harrison Ford, I think. Yeah, but it I might agree with not. That. Look, but it might not look like Harrison Ford from, let's say, Raiders of the Lost Ark. It may look it, like him in, in his later years. Yeah, I was going to say that. He's very clean shaven as well. Right. But, it, um, it, that would have sold it a heck of a lot more if they would have thrown some stubble on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's nice. Nice nice picture again you've done. You get excellent photographs in your Thanks. toy gate, I have to say. Um, you really do a great job of that. It's yeah. a nice it's a nice figure. Um it doesn't yeah. come cheap. I you know, I I posted there in my little review. It it's about sixty bucks here in the US. You know, three times the cost of a black series six inch figure, but I think Ooh. <laughs> I, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> What for are you doing? Are watching, for those that are watching the video, video version, you could take his face off, which is kind of an <laughs> odd statement, and you could switch out the eyes. And wow! In, in other figures, I I don't think it really applies to this version or to this figure, but this little piece that you could install behind, it has the separate eye stocks on it, I will say, where they could be painted more accurately. You know, so let's say it was just a solid head like the Han Solos that we have for the six inch line. Basically, yep. you know, you're trying to paint a tiny little iris on a figure at that scale and hoping not to get it above or below the eyelid. Mm -hmm. With this, mm -hmm. it's it's on a separate piece, so it's a lot more forgiving as far as you know being accurate sure. Sure, sure. and from what I've heard these little pieces it includes two I, with my set I think it's just a replacement in case you would lose it but on other figures the position of the iris can be shifted like let's say left or right so it looks yep. like he's yep. looking at an angle they did that with a Buzz late year version of right uh, so I thought it was kind of odd for this figure to to do that if it they were going to really change up the direction of the of the eyes, but hey, how did you feel for the sturdiness of the figure? I've had a couple of Figma Max Factory figures before, Robocop, and it was pretty solid. And I... yeah, it's it's pretty solid. I would say if you try to get a little crazy with the leg poses, the hips, the leg will pop out of the hip socket. The hips don't lie. Okay. Yep. Um, that would probably be my first real detractor from it. I don't think I even really mentioned that in my in my review. The other is that it comes with an assortment of hands that you can switch out and essentially they're little pegs on each articulated wrist pin that go into a hole on the sleeve or, you know, forearm and mm -hmm. uh I'm guessing over time if you if you're really into switching out the accessory, you're going to wear out that hole. And the wrist, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna wear this out, and yeah. hands are gonna fall out. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm just okay. 
Uh, yeah, the accessories we talked about this the last time, but nice range of, uh, and I think that's the point we're seeing about the, the look and feel of him. He, he he's kind of non-indie in terms of not Raiders, not Temple, not Last Crusade, and probably a little bit closer towards the Crystal Skull in, in some ways. But right. cause you, you, but you own, but you only do get the accessories from the first three movies. So um, and in the photos that I'm showing. I, I mentioned in, like, if you were to click on any one of those three photos where he's holding the chalice, yep. you know, the, the fake grail, the, the, um, um, the book, the, the, the fake grail, the, the grail diary, or the tablet, those accessories do not come with the figure. Those are the accessories that came in the hidden relics boxes from the three and three quarter oh. inch line. Right. So, Surprisingly, they're to scale with the six-inch yeah. figure, and so I thought, you know, it was kind of a cool, cool thing to include them in there. And it says right on the photo that, you know, Grail tablet not included. Yep, yep. So yeah, you can see all that. You you photographed all the the proper accessories anyway. Yeah. So, uh, so it's if you're an Indiana Jones fan, I know a couple of guys that, or yeah, my yeah. local collector friends here, and they're totally into you know. <clears throat> Excuse me, Indiana Jones, and they're going to pick it up. It's not base. It's not something that the average, the average everyday collector's going to want to grab. Sure. Sure. But uh, it's a, it's a decent figure all around. So, well, what about the box of the packaging? Is it is it kind of similar to the the Black Series in, in size, or is it just, is it huge? Yeah, it, um, oh, I've got it here. Um, I don't have a side by side comparison that I showed in the actual. Well, you've um, taken a shot actually, where we can see the figure inside the box, and you can see it's quite right. a bit deeper. Yeah. So let me hold this up here in my. So they're they're roughly the same size. Oh wow, that is close. The they're a little bit deeper in regards to how the packaging is for. Still that. nice, it's still but kind of yeah, it's a great presentation. Little... It's. It beats the Black Series presentation, hands down. Um, but, yeah, it's a little bit, oh, t you know, maybe an eighth of an inch shorter than the than the Black Series boxes are. And, again, about, you know, a third the thick, the depth. So, it's yeah. Still makes, it's it's yeah. something you could easily put with a Black Series, kind of, you know, your figure's a six inch if you want to. It looks good. Yep. Very nice. Nice piece. You tempted me to think to get this now, actually, now that I see your photographs. So I like it. It looks. I have a display. You know, I have him right here, actually, on my desk. Um, but normally he's in the case along with the other uh, six-inch figures that I have out. So very cool. Yeah. Goodbye. Very goodbye. Talking of toys, I think you just put on the list there um, Wave 4 of the 3 and 3 quarter over at uh, Darkside Buddies. is. Uh, we've talked about this a few times before, but they're, yep. um, they have them, and if you haven't got them, definitely pre-order them, because I know for a fact they're flying out the door. Uh, they have sold a lot of these. Uh, and I think particularly the Bastilla Shans and Snowtrooper Commanders uh, and the look and Yoda is just making this an irresistible package, I think, for a lot yep. of people. Uh, yep. There's a link on screen. but um, Yeah, you could you buy know. from them just the six, or you could buy a case, which includes two of each, which is a nice, a nice <laughs> refreshing upgrade or alternative to what's been going on the past few years regarding yeah, exactly. Hasbro two. stuff. Um, and if you do order a full case, um, you, Free it's basically flat... flat Great shipping or free, so yeah, can't beat that. Can't beat that at all. What else did we have? Uh, oh, this was something I just added in the last minute. Was our friends at um, Jedi News? I think were the first ones to share this. Uh, there's mm -hmm. been a few others. Uh, Makes me wrong, but um, boiled down to the Jack Pacific 31 inch. Just waiting for this link to finally arrive here, but uh, the Jack Pacific. Uh, figures um, have another friend in their collection. So we had the Darth Vader, we've had uh, Shock Trooper, we've had a 501st Trooper, and I think that's been it so far, but we've now got um, some, I can now share this, 
the um, uh, Commander Cody. So I was right. kind of rather excited, but uh, no, I think I'll pass. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit big, but uh, yeah. cool looking nonetheless. Did you ever yeah. fall for any of these? Did you know? No, 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 no. So uh, prices uh, will vary. I think about uh, saying they're seventy-five bucks for US. They're about fifty bucks here actually. So I think that price might be a little high, but certainly fifty pounds in the UK, which is that's quite a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, because they're yeah they're uh, about you know in the thirty dollar range here, like let's say at Target. Um, but uh, Matt um, <laughs> Booker from from uh, Yoda's or excuse me from Je- Jedi News. He he has his own store, and he mentioned to me that they kind of bumped up the MSRP on those to, for him. Oh, I don't know if that's going to be a countrywide or a global kind of a, a price adjustment for those. You know, honestly, I wouldn't be too surprised. I mean, that's a lot of plastic, a lot of plastic there for <laughs> for the money. Um, and there interest- are some. There's some unique parts there too. I mean, it's not just a repaint of the previous clones. You know, it's got a, it's got a couple. It's obviously it's got a new helmet and it's got a new arm to include the antenna that's on the shoulder. But it's an interesting choice, I think. The reason uh, for them to make that. I mean, of all the characters they made Darth Vader first, I totally get it. Then to jump on to the clones, okay, I kind of get that too in terms of milking the colors, but I would have expected them to truly milk it and see a lot more uh, a Nutapau clone before maybe we saw Cody with molded different parts, but right. it's, it's very nice. It looks pretty good, uh, but huge collectibles to have. It's a kind of nutty yeah. collection to get into, I think, unless you've got a massive, massive place to display them, but uh, yeah. Yep. But, uh, they're out there, so yeah, if you want one, go and get it. Yep. Um, um, I think that kind of closes out our collectible news this week, um, kind of moving on to TV and movie, books and all that. Um, obviously, it was April Fool's here on the 1st. Since, oh, what was it, I think 2012, um, our site, yakface.com, hasn't participated in the in the festivities <laughs> Just because we kind of went, I think a lot of the sites went out on a high note regarding that. We mm. we kind of uh, did all did the, here, the, yeah. the Dan Curto tribute <laughs> deal where we all kind of said that Dan Curto's taking over all of our sites. And we, <laughs> we plugged that. Um, since then, we haven't, we haven't done a, an April Fool's joke. Just because I think it's it's kind of a played out thing for me personally. No, no, I agree with that. It was I didn't post anything, but one of our uh, our guy in New York posted a, a little thing, kind of funny. The this a Star Trek reference, but uh, oh, was that the TJ Hooker? Something like that he posted. I can't from a TV it guy a cover. But I thought it was quite amusing. I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, so, uh, I I did catch that. Uh, I thought it was funny. And for you younger watchers, viewers, listeners, you're not gonna know who TJ Hooker is. But it's yeah. it's William Shatner who was he played a cop on a TV show with Heather Locklear, and you're probably not gonna know who she is either. Um, oh, really? <laughs> it was uh, no good. Put it that way. Yeah, it was a typical '80s. Yeah. Anyway. Um, William Shatner, but um, yeah, I think he's kind of died for a lot of things. The, the the irony is, it's even it's worse here for us because uh, uh, we have April's fill and we kind of all go oh, okay funny and and then it ends and then right. you guys get out of bed and you have it all over again and we're like oh god it's yeah like, so it's a, it's a 2D affair for us so uh, right. we're really sick of it over here so yeah what else do we have you episode, episode, about episode 7 what's yeah, this over the past you know couple weeks I didn't I don't think I mentioned it on the last show but there were, um, there's kind of rumors floating out there about shooting locations regarding um, episode okay. seven. Um, you know, Iceland's been floating out there, and automatically people assumed Iceland meant that we were going back to Hoth. And Iceland typically isn't a, a Hoth-like environment. It's kind of the opposite of its its name. It might have been that way previously. Um, I think uh, Greenland is more icy than than Iceland is. <laughs> um, 
but uh, that was kind of the assumption that, th that because of that shooting location, they thought, oh, we're going back to Hoth for Episode Seven. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't count on it. No, Personally. it's more. I mean, Eastland's more kind of dynamic landscapes. They used it in Thor: The Dark World. If you've watched right. the special features there, and uh, it's a very alien planet-like look, not necessarily ice. Uh, so, right. Uh, yeah. And then there was also talk of going to Morocco and Cairo. So, hmm. Morocco and Cairo. Does that mean Tatooine? Maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. I would think so. I think because of I, this is just me regurgitating discussions that are going out there, but they're saying that sure. because of how kind of the turmoil in the Middle East, in that part of the world, maybe um, Tunisia might not be the best place for production for a movie. Um, so they're looking for alternate locations to kind of s stand in for the for Tatooine. I don't know. Do it here in do it here in the desert of Arizona or something. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? I mean, it, it could well be a building. It could be a right. temple. It we'll could do it in Australia. Be... I don't care. Well, <laughs> well, they did do it here in Australia for episode three, I think it was, wasn't it? But yeah. um, um, yeah. I mean, looking at those locations, I mean, Iceland, I think, without a doubt, is going to be for the landscapes. I would suggest right. Morocco and Cairo. Yes, it could be sand. But I think it's also, uh, you know, it could be Jedi temples, Sith temples, yeah. beautiful old uh, decorated buildings, and just getting the shape of it, maybe the, the digitize the inside of it. Um, kind of things like, uh, if you remember Gladiator years and years ago, it came out right. the short, some bits, I think, in the uh, necropolis uh, in um, Athens or, or Rome, I think it was. I can't remember what it was. But they then digitized the rest of the um, kind of Roman amphitheater around them, so mm -hmm. yeah, it could be that. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I kind of hope that we don't go back to the, you know, landscapes and planets that we've seen before. I'd yeah. like to visit some other locations, maybe. I agree. I agree. Anyway, Lando. nothing confirmed. So Lando, oh geez, uh, he was on <laughs> Dancing with the Stars, and trust me, I'm not a avid viewer of that program. I watched the first episode with Lando on it and I <laughs> my suspicions were confirmed that um he should probably not be on that show. Um but he he's done. He he quit actually. He he said that his back issues were giving him too much problems, too many problems and uh he withdrew from the show so we don't have to Endure. <laughs> endure and see him shuffle about and endure, you know, horrible Star Wars puns anymore. Yeah, Thank yeah. God. There's, there's a real mix, I'm, I'm diverging from it, there's a real mixed opinion on this because uh, a lot of fans just want everything Star Wars. And I think, maybe I'm speaking for you or not, but there's a limit, and I raised this at Celebration Europe to the panel a couple of times about where do we all call the line on, on Star Wars because sometimes it goes too far. For me, the Xbox Connect dancing right uh, Han Solo and Carp oh dear lord it's just like really is this where we're going to it's just but then other fans say no I love it I want to do that but right at and, what point you lose your integrity it's kind of um... yeah and over the past week or so it's kind of come up that you know they're doing a um, Star Wars themed episode of Big Bang Theory yeah that's right and another that's show as well another year. didn't they do that already Funny. with wasn't Carrie Fisher and or was that a different show? Carrie Fisher and um, uh, I remember being at Fanboys and she voices on Family Guy, but I don't remember seeing yeah. it. Yeah, in, uh, in a show recently, James Earl, I think James Earl Jones was also on the episode with Carrie Fisher. Maybe right. was it on Big Bang Theory? Oh, it was. I don't know. Was. You're right. Big Bang Theory. Yeah. You're right. She turns off a, a tiny little cameo. At the right. End. It's like uh, you're forcing this. I don't want to watch it. Um, no. Anyway. Moving on, um, Star Wars uh, reads day three. Let me just share this up on screen. You'll know a little bit more about this than I do. Um, yeah, it's obviously being three. It's the third annual um, Star Wars reads deal where um, various authors kind of go to different um, bookstores throughout the U.S. and they have they have readings and they take Q and A's regarding their material. Um, 
I went to one. I think it, I went to Star Wars Reads Day One, which was at a local bookstore. Um, it's nice. It's something you can bring your. It's a family event. You could bring your kids to or friends, and you sit around and enjoy Star Wars for an evening. Um, Very good. Yeah, it's it's fun. Definitely uh, uh, anything that involves books and kids and getting their imagination for Star Wars, because it was uh, probably a huge thing for you and I when we were younger. So it's, um, mm-hmm. you know, th- there is video games, and I'm not poo-pooing video games over, or, you know, books over video games, but just uh, it's nice to get a mix of both. Um, you can get right. a little bit obsessed with games and, and never pick up a book, and sometimes the books just take a completely different slant on it. And, uh, yeah, they'll take you places games won't go, so nice little mix. So very cool. Yep, and I believe the last couple are your Yes, entries. I found a couple of little uh, show notes that I've uh, added in here. It was uh, This was a quite an interesting one. Uh, popped up on Facebook, one of the many, many pages I follow. Uh, just thousands, I can't keep up with them all. But this one really caught my eye because being a complete uh, fat sleaze uh, and anything bounty hunters, look at this. This is someone's... Uh, um, this is, this is a, a, cli- a clip from a 1966 episode of Doctor Who. Uh, if you don't know Doctor Who, I'm sure you do, but uh, Doctor Who, a BBC TV show, known for its slightly dodgy effects over the years and um, incredibly low budget for the BBC. But look at this. This is Bosk's jumpsuit, 1966. Yep. How classic and cool is that? So Bosk's jumpsuit is basically nearly, well, he's, what, 50-something years old? So that's right. Pretty impressive. So exactly, you can. I mean, you can just tell immediately yep. it's the same outfit. So um, I guess filming in Elstree uh, when they were in the UK at that time, these costumes were maybe props that were used by uh, libraries or, or companies who rent them out, and they just thought, well, that looks kind of spacey. <laughs> and right, and I don't know if they were actual um, space suit, you know, converted space suits. Who knows? The I'd have to look, things, that's for sure. I'd um, have, to, have to look it up. I I thought I remember seeing that somewhere that you know they could be. That, that's what they could be, based well, off I mean, of. If you recall some of the uh, making of Star Wars books or videos that we've probably watched over the years, mm-hmm. I mean the cantina, uh, as we were talking about earlier on the Lego cantina, the the dispensers for the drinks are IG eighty eight head. Right. Which itself is part of a Rolls Royce engine, apparently, um, for planes, I think. Right. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff like that that was littered through the universe. So yep. I'm waiting for a book one day of uh, you know Star Wars props and all that history. And I've seen a few websites pulling stuff together. Um, yeah. And one of our early, early shows we showed, and we both salivated over this huge list of props they found or discovered. And yes, um, that's right. And they were falling apart or deteriorating, but. There you go. I just something I never knew. And I, I normally, you know, get drowned in Star Wars stuff, but Bosky Bosk, he's uh, got a bit of a history there. So uh, Doctor Who fans, one on, one up on Star Wars. Um, the other thing was um, you and I, uh, you watched it as well as I did. But Joe Johnson, uh, fantastic director uh, of and heavily involved in Star Wars over the years. If you don't know who Joe Johnson is, just to give you a bit of a brief. Bio. I'll read out just here from his YouTube page what he uh, he's kind of back in history. But this guy goes back forever. Not only yep. Star Wars, but just about every film you could you could think of. He has a YouTube channel. He mentions here. So Joe Johnson, film director, artist, and writer, uh, created many of the Star Wars spaceships and characters we still love today. So everybody, uh, and no disrespect to Ralph McQuarrie, everybody gives the Ralph McQuarrie love. But Joe Johnson was an integral part of this, particularly Boba Fett, the prototype. Um, he was the visual effects art director on Star Wars episodes 4, 5, and 6. All the vehicles, he then went on to direct movies such as Captain America, uh, such as Jason's T-shirt today, uh, <laughs> Jumanji, Hidalgo, The Rocketeer, October Sky, Jurassic Park, blah, 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 on and on it goes. So he's really been one of the, the guys who helped create Boba Fett. Uh, probably would know more about Bosk's outfit there. Uh, Y-Wings, TIE Fighters, the Millennium Falcon of all things, people. Uh, the Sandcrawler, the Death Star, the Snowwalker, Cloud City, Slave One uh, amongst... Well, he had some involvement in that, but um, he's got a channel on YouTube and he just does these fantastic Q&As. I won't play it, but uh, I'll just give you a little uh, screenshot just of the um, his YouTube kind of Q&A. But, so he has these in-depth Q&As where he goes on and he's only got about 30 or so videos, but... Um, yep. 
subscribe to the guy. This guy's a genius. He's an absolute mm -hmm. Star Wars legend, and he's out there on social media, and I don't think a lot of people are really engaging with him. So you can actually speak to this guy who essentially made the Millennium Falcon. That's pretty yeah. damn special. So uh, yeah. Yeah, he's, head over to his channel. He's done a few sketches of it in his videos, and yep, it's it's really quite neat. He does um, a good job in this one, talking about Slave One and the Falcon as well, so... Going back to what we were talking about, like, regarding Bosk and his flight suit, um, mm. there's a site out there that I followed for a really long time when I was kind of dabbling in um, prop replicas. Um, it's called Parts of Star Wars. Ah, cool. Uh, okay. There's a... It's, the website itself is called partsofsw.com, and it has a list, or you could click on different things like character, item, um, and whatnot. Let me go back here, parts of Star Wars. Uh, basically, you could look through this catalog, and it will show what real-world items were used to make whatever a uh, costume, a prop, a weapon lightsaber, whatnot, from Star Wars, and that involves both the original trilogy and prequel trilogy. And I was just, at a glance, I clicked on character, and um, I searched through, there's, you know, 2-1-B, Chewbacca, Han Solo, Luke. It has break breakdowns of their different outfits that they wore in each movie, and if you go down to Bounty Hunter's Bosk, it says flight, the flight suit. In A New Hope, this was a flight suit worn by an unnamed spacer, which was obviously Boshek that we know. Um, it appears that this was an actual pilot flight suit um, and wore a real high-altitude helmet to go with it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So if you go to this, if I won't go through all of the nitty-gritty on this website, but if you go to partsofsw.com, you can search, search through figures to see how how the props were made, so it's kind of neat. Hmm. Even the Bosch one there we were just talking about, just loads of stuff I've never seen before. His rifle uh, strapped around each of Bosch's legs are pistol cartridges similar to those worn in the German Air Force during World War II. Right. It's bizarre. And, and those are the same straps that you see like on the X-Wing pilots. That's right. Yeah, they reused them. You're right. Yeah. Yep. And the leg flares, all that stuff, you know. It's very... Excellent. Really good site. Love these yeah. guys. This reminds me of the, the real old good days of the web where people just... They, they spent so much time putting all this stuff together and all this detail. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> this kind of get forgotten about now. It's this, a shame. This site's been around forever. I mean, I, I don't remember it when I first started searching out this stuff because <clears throat> it's interesting if you were to go to, like, let's say, the lightsaber section, and it'll, it'll describe that, you know, the... The lightsaber hilts from like episodes uh, four and five were built from real world um, flash units that were attached to sides of cameras back mm. in the day. Um, my my dad is a professional photographer, and one day I went down into the storage area of his studio, and I found boxes and boxes of these flash units. And okay. it's essentially you're pulling Luke Skywalker's lightsaber out of a box. The oh, only wow. thing you have to add to it is are the grips around the bottom, and that's it. I wow. I could grab one handy. Uh, <laughs> it's it's crazy, and that's what I use. My I have a, both a Luke Skywalker um, and Darth Vader lightsaber that are built essentially using the actual props or, you know, real-world flash units that that were used to make them for the movies, so it's kind of... Well, I, th I think we'll be coming back to parts of Star... You already got me looking at this while you were talking there in between, and I'm kind of flicking back and forth, but um, I, I, I love this already. Some, some of the stuff... Dengar's body armor is... Um, I didn't realize this. The chest plate was a snowtrooper. Mm -hmm. uh, and loads of the parts on them are, are modified, slight modifications on uh, stormtrooper armor. So fascinating stuff. Love this. This is the Star Wars we need to know about. It's very, very yep. cool. That's us, I think. And down I think to that's it um, for this week. Hmm, down to what you bought, I think, which you've already mentioned. But um, uh, yeah, um, yeah. This week was the Indiana Jones we talked about, and two new tech decks. And I believe I shared that on Facebook. If you didn't see that, um, 
there were two more that came out, two of the seven, which only leaves one more to be released, and I believe that one's the Princess Leia, the slave Princess Leia, which would be deck six. Um, so the other ones that we were talking about over the last few weeks are coming out, they're just... Uh, right. Um, it's not like waiting is... for another wave in three or four months. Oh, I love that fit. It's gorgeous. Yep. There's a Fed helmet and a Chewbacca. Ooh, the Chewie's not too hot in that drawing, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, um, these are more of kind of like a longboard style, not like a street board. You know, these are more of kind of like the surfer cruiser type of boards. Um, I still had to get them. I... <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's a, I love the fits and the, the designs. That 70 logo we talked about is kind of uh, really nice. Yep. Thing. The sticker's the same? Is it still the same Star Wars sticker? Yeah, the same... The same... Star. I don't know if it's the same sticker that came in the other Boba Fett board. Um, it's... Well, that's pack, the one I've got there. It's that kind of... Different color. Different this color? one is just same all... Uh, this one's just gold. All right, okay. So Beautiful. It's, it's different I love it. Um, nice. So that leaves, like I said, just the... Uh, Princess Leia in the slave outfit. Here's the back of the package. Um, you can see her right there. For once, she doesn't. Uh, she's not been kind of cropped off by the uh, wheels. <laughs> yeah, by the base plate. Yep. Um, and I think previous shows we talked about the uh, the Darth Vader board being an exclusive. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's exclusive to the to the ramp. My guess is that that Leia and Darth Vader are going to come out carded individually like these like these two figures because it is numbered on this on the sure. on the card back and it's not numbered on the box that um that 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 comes with the ramp you know it doesn't mention that it's a, that it's an exclusive on that box anywhere so i imagine that 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 board will be a general Available. release so very cool, and they're very cool collectibles, so I'm, I'm kind of glad to see yeah, them. Yeah, uh, if, like I kind of already. mentioned before, I was a big skateboarder back in the <laughs> 90s and 80s, so this kind of, it's it's probably not so, not something I would normally collect if I wasn't a skateboarder. Sure. But I couldn't resist. Oh, I couldn't resist. The, the vintage packaging alone is something, I think, that's really helping that uh, Santa Cruz line. If it was just done in a kind of crappy baggie or something, mm -hmm. it's, it just wouldn't have the same effect, I don't think. Um, but and as we discussed on the, the, the collecting and hoarding episode of World Conversations, it's all about the packaging sometimes. It's all about yeah. the packaging. And, and just to touch on those skateboards, um, Santa Cruz, they're, they're selling full-size versions, like, you know, actual skatable versions of these decks. Um... And they're coming out with, I saw on f uh, Facebook just today, there's a second wave of boards that they're releasing. So I think that probably brings them up to almost a dozen now of of actual scalable decks that you can purchase full size. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. I know it's, um, it's a good license for them to get into, I guess, and one that's yep. they've got to be making some money off that. But... Uh... Hey, Star Wars stuff, if it's cool, it will sail without a doubt. That's right. so. And that's kind of wrap things up for this week. Again, we would like to thank our viewers. First of all, thank you for leaving your comments and suggestions and uh, those that have, that have contributed over the past few shows. I mean, this was show number nine, so we're going to keep it going. Um, and uh, we'd like to thank our friends at uh, Jedi Temple Archives and Jedi Defender. Uh, Star Wars Action News, Yoda's News, uh, Jedi News, Imperial Shipyards, Panther Skull, Rebel Force Radio, and our fine folks at Dorkside Toys for helping spread the word about the show. And keeping your uh, habits of plastic. But, uh, yep, keeping things in check. <laughs> oh, good. All right, until next week, uh, we will talk to you later, and we'll see you. See ya.